What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the Home Theater Hobbies. And today I wanna to talk to you about speaker break-in, speaker burn-in, speaker run-in. Basically it's conditioning your speakers so that they sound their best after you spend a little bit of time conditioning them. Now this is an actual, this is actually kind of a controversial topic on the internet in forums. People argue whether it's worth doing or not doing, if it has any benefits. And honestly, I kind of follow on the side of there are benefits. But before I tell you why I think there are benefits, let me explain what speaker break-in is. Basically, you have a speaker and it's made of mechanical components. And there's a few mechanical components that are a little bit more rigid coming out of the manufacturer than some of the others. That includes the surround, which I have here, this little surround that holds in the cone. And then down here uh, on the bottom, there's also a little what's known as a spider. That's also a bit more rigid. And both of these flex as they move in and out. And so what you're doing when you're breaking in the speaker is you're loosening them up. You're allowing your speaker to have to reach its full potential so it has much more dynamic range. It can hit those high highs like it's supposed to and those low lows. Now, as I said earlier, a lot of people don't believe that it's real. But there are two reasons why I think it's real. The first one being a lot of speaker manufacturers recommend it. Some of them do it before the speakers ship and then others recommend that you do it once you get home. The second reason I believe in speaker break-in or burn-in is because I have experienced it myself. Since I test a lot of speakers, I always go ahead and I break them in. Well, there's been a couple of pairs of speakers, not all of them, but just a couple of pairs of speakers that I set them up, did everything I needed to do, and then I started the break-in process. And whenever I do this, I typically will turn them on and then I'll let them play for five, six, seven hours, 10 hours, whatever, and I leave the room. Shut them off, come back, you know, do that a few times until the break-in process is over. But typically, I'm never here. Then at the end of the process, I actually sit down and start listening to them. Well, there's a couple pairs of speakers, like I said, that I listened to at the end of the breaking process, and they did sound different. They were fuller. They didn't sound as harsh. It was just a better sound than when I initially listened to them when I started the sounds playing. So that's how I know that it actually does work. It's because I've actually experienced it. And again, I've tried a lot of speakers and it doesn't always work. I don't listen to them and say, oh man, it just, who? But it has happened a couple times for me. So two reasons why I recommend speaker break-in is one, the manufacturers do it and recommend it, and in my own experience. So let's go ahead, let's move on and talk about tips and tricks. The first tip I've already alluded to, and that is you need to break out the user manual for your speakers or subwoofer or go to the manufacturer's website and see what they recommend for break-in for their speakers. It might be 10 hours, it might be 30 hours, it might be 50 hours, but go ahead, break them in, then judge how the speakers sound because initially they may not sound as good, but it may get better after the break-in period. So you definitely wanna do that. The second tip is all about content. Whatever media that you're using, whether it be music or movies, you wanna make sure it has nice, decent, dynamic range. And what I mean by that is you want it to have high highs and low lows, because again, you want to work this driver system in and out as much as possible. So, you know, do different types of music, do different types of movies, but you wanna make sure that you're working the bass end, the mid range, and the treble through various frequencies as you test your speakers. And that brings me to my next point, volume. You wanna make sure you have an adequate volume set for your speakers. It doesn't have to be set at 10, but I'd set it at, let's say seven or eight. That way you're getting plenty of excursion on the speaker system. It's moving in and out. So you're getting a nice stretch on the surround, on the spider, on the different components as you're breaking them in. Now I wanna move on and tell you about a few adjustments I make inside my AV receiver to make it even easier. Now, the first thing I do is I do go ahead and I run my auto calibration software. That way I have all the right levels. I know the phase is adjusted. All of those things are done for the speakers. Then I go in and I set it up to run multi-channel stereo. And what that means is that all of the speakers, whether it be a five channel system, seven channel system, nine channel system, doesn't really matter. They're playing the exact same thing. So I'm getting all the speakers broken in. I um, mean, even the subwoofer, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm getting all the speakers broken in with the same content. Now, the next thing I do is I go into the AV receiver and I adjust the crossover setting. If I am breaking in speakers, then I bring the crossover setting. I set it at, let's say, 60 or 40 hertz, and that just sends even more bass signals to the speakers. 
But if I am breaking in a subwoofer, I actually adjust the crossover setting up. I take it to 120 hertz, 160 hertz, even 200 hertz to send even more frequencies to that bass woofer. So it's getting even more frequencies as it goes lower. And again, all I'm looking for here is excursion of the drivers so that they can flex and get stretched out a bit. So that's all I'm doing. Now, once I'm done with all of those things, I go back in and I reset the crossover where I want it to be, which is typically like 80 hertz or something like that. But for the break-in period, I do adjust the crossover setting. So speakers, I go low, and if I'm breaking in a subwoofer, I go high. And if I have both, then I kind of try to vary it, you know, whatever, or maybe I'll just set it at 80 hertz or 100 hertz or something like that. But you get the idea here. So that's what I do when I am trying to break in my speakers and subwoofer. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and hit that subscribe button. If you have some tips or tricks that you'd like to share, drop them in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to support us on Patreon and use those links to buy all your gear because it does help support the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time.